Street. All right, Center Theater here in beautiful downtown War Park. And I want to thank him for another band. I didn't know Brad Pitt was out of work. Remember that guy with plenty of color in there? Is that Brad Pitt? Mm -hmm. Yes, it was. It was that hot chick that was uh, singing yeah. Linda Ronstadt. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing it too. I don't know, man. Hey, we're having a party tonight. Saturday night, when you're all invited. And if you want to sing along on any of these songs, especially this next one, if they all fit up here on stage. We can social yeah. distance here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just said the place. I know you're going to love this next one. Please sing along the chorus on us.
card. That was actually Jim's first hit. Who boxed with the Duke Carter was part of the Carter family. A.P. Carter, Sarah Carter, and Mother Maybell Carter, the Duke Carter's uh, was a mother, her daughter, Mother Maybell was a mother. And uh, a lot of people, musical historians, say that Carter family in Bank Country is not true. It was actually a guy from New Jersey. Yeah, his name is Ralph here. And uh, this is back around 1929. They, they, he, he was a sales guy. And the only records that were available in those days were uh, Opera, Caruso, Symphony. And he wasn't selling any of those. The, the Prophet was in the record player, not the records. They wasn't selling in the South. So he had an idea. I'm going to go down south, went down to Virginia, and I'll find one of those singers, they call him Hillbilly, or mountain music, so he thought he'd clean up a little bit. And I'm going to call it country music. They'll probably sell in the country. And if I could sell 3,000 or 5,000, then that's a lot of record players. So he ran an audition, and he, the Carter family signed for a princely song back then. 500 bucks. And the first record didn't sell 5,000, didn't sell 10,000, sold 300,000. And not just in uh, the South, but here in California, the Midwest, and so on. And this was the first, the first, their first hit. And, and um, it was written during the Depression when times were pretty bad. You know, we've had a kind of last year was a, let's just say, a year for the books. But here's a song about hope. And it was in the middle of the Great Depression and uh, fascism was on the rise. Oh, keep on the sunny side. One, two, three. <laughs>
And Bob Gillen and Johnny Cash were lifetime friends. And Bob credits Johnny with inspiring him to become a singer and a songwriter, and Johnny credits Bob with inspiring him to write songs about social justice. Johnny Cash and Jim Carter won a Grammy. Country do every year on the sex song written by Bob Dylan, exposing him to a whole new audience. <laughs> Thank you. 
yours. He knew the guy that got us in trouble there in the Midwest, Mid-East, whatever, George. Well, what else? I mean, Bill and George, you missed it. But every show, he would do at least one gospel or spiritual tune. We're going to do a song written by his good friend and longtime guitar player, Carl Perkins. Now, Carl was a rock and roll star in his own right. In fact, in 1955, his version of Blue Suede Shoes, which he wrote, I was outselling them. I was outselling them. I was present. Carl was on his way to New York City from Tennessee to play at Solomon the show when he got in a fatal car back in Delaware. He killed his little brother Jay that was a bass player in the band. And Carl was laid up with a broken back, a broken neck, and some bad habits, prescription pills, and other drugs and alcohol. And Johnny gave him a, a job in his band. And uh, there's a line in this song it's called Daddy Sang Bass. It said, now the little brother's going on. A lot of people think it refers to Johnny's a cash brother in the past, and Johnny was young. First to uh, Carl Perkins' little brother, Jerry, passing that fatal car wreck in Delaware. One, two, three. <laughs>
say it. Like I said a little earlier, I called Perkins work with Johnny Cash for almost 20 years as a band. And every show we do at least one or two tunes. And here's Oliver. Good song written by Carl. Well, honey, don't. <laughs>
said it was the first rock and roll song. So Johnny wrote that and recorded in 1955, and they call that the start of rock and roll and get rid of them. You know, uh, uh, Johnny Cash helped a lot of young singers and songwriters get a start. Go to Glenda Ronstadt, she toured with them in the early days. One fellow that he became close friends with was Chris Christopherson. Now, Chris was a helicopter pilot in Vietnam. And when he got out of the Army, he decided he was going to become a singer and a songwriter, so he went directly to Nashville. Within a week of being in Nashville, he got a job at Columbia Records as a janitor. <laughs> sweeping his cigarette butts out of the studio. And the word at Columbia, Nashville, was stay away from the franchise, Johnny Cash. He was the guy making him all the money. He didn't know bring him any of those cassette tapes or song sheets. We don't know. So Chris had a song he knew Johnny could record would be a big hit. So one day he rented a helicopter and he landed on Johnny's front lawn in the state of Hendersonville, Tennessee. And I said, anybody that ambitious, I got I'm gonna have to take a listen. He became one of his biggest hits. Well, I woke up on Sunday morning with no way to put my hand in the room. I didn't hurt me. And the beer I had to breakfast was bad.
lockdown, lockdown, I guess the word is last year. But there's a song about a guy that was locked up. Being locked up means you got no Netflix. Can't call Domino's, they ain't bring over a large double cheese pizza. No, you can't. They ain't go down to 7 Eleven even with a mask on to buy some beer. The other guy was uh, stuck in prison.